Justin, I was meant to be done for the year. I literally said I was only going to do another podcast if something big happened. You so, are, something you are, big happened. You were over. I was done. I was wrapping for the year. I was very tired. It's Christmas time. All the podcasts are wrapping up. Yeah. Everyone's finishing. It's Christmas time and I take Christmas seriously. Um, As do I. And it's, it's a time to be festive. It's, it's a time to wind down. Uh, and then Disney screwed us. That's what's they happened. They really did. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. out of nowhere. No warning. No, hey, by the way, there's some more content coming out. No. We're just going to give you a few announcements. Yeah, none of that. It was literally... Did you know Investor Day was happening? I didn't know it was a thing at all. I think when I heard... When I saw all the news dropping, I was like, oh, that is a thing. I forgot about that. But I still have... I can't recall one where it went like this. Where yeah. it was like... We were both getting ready for a birthday on the day. Oh, we, we, yeah. we had a big day ahead of us and we're yeah. like, all right, I'm getting G'd up. I've showered. I've done this, that. And here in Australia, we were starting early. It was like 2, 2 p.m. We were starting. But over in America, I don't even know what time that would have been. It must have been like 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Yeah, at night. I guess so. And then our plan's thrown into disarray because suddenly... Bombshell. We, well, we have to sit and watch our computer for an hour. Yeah. It was ridiculous. There was, was so nuts. much crap announced by Disney... It's easy to focus on Star Wars straight out the gate, and we will spend a lot of time on Star Wars. But there was actually more stuff that I kept coming to learn the days after because it was so much all at once. Yeah. Like, the Buzz Lightyear show? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, that's just... What? There's so much involved in this. This wasn't just Star Wars. We thought it was at the start. Yeah. That's all, because that's all we were seeing was Star Wars. And I think that's fair because it was the kind of the first thing they brought up that mm-hmm. really had any meaning. Yep. Uh but there was so much more after that. Yeah, it's um. There's a lot to unpack with it. Now, do you have a preference where we start? What What do you think? Um. Well, let's go back to the start. I guess we can get all of the boring stuff out of the way because there were a few kind of announcements made, like you know, before the Star Wars stuff that we saw mm-hmm. that I've now looked up previously. Like yeah. So yeah. So things that we were already aware of. I don't know that we were already aware of, but just stuff that. Um, is not commonly associated with Disney. Okay, like what? Um, like, well, obviously, because they bought Fox. Was it earlier this year or last year? Mm. Or the year mm-hmm. before? Mm-hmm. It happened. I think... Jeez, I don't even know anymore. Yeah. <laughs> could it, it could have been 2018. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. But um, they acquired Hulu through that. Yep. So they were making some announcements there, and mm-hmm. I didn't realize that they were involved in that. In Hulu? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I don't know if I did necessarily either. Um, that's something. And then, of course, also they've got Star... Yeah, okay, yeah. So I saw this just here. So what is Star? It's a new international star is streaming. So is that a new st- streaming service? I don't know. Ah, uh, so building on the successful launch of Disney Plus Hot Star in India and Indonesia, Disney shared new details for the international general entertainment content brand Star. Okay, so it's an international brand. Yeah, which will be included as part of Disney Plus in select international markets and launch as a separate streaming service in Latin America as Star Plus. Oh. So Disney Plus mustn't be a thing in certain parts of the world. Well, it wasn't even available in like half of Europe until like early this year. That's weird. Do you think... Why would they go with Star? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah. So something I guess, else to make more money off. Yeah. All right. So that so that was one thing. So and then yeah, the Hulu stuff I saw. Because um, is FX Fox? Is that a branch of Fox? Because I saw there was announcements about Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. There was something related. Yeah, they've but, just been renewed for another four seasons. So there was a whole section. Here we go. So you got Hulu there. Yeah. So oh, Hulu. Okay, so- I think FX shows stream on Hulu. So yes. I think, so that obviously that's the crossover there, um, including things like The Handsma- Handmaid's Tale um, for season four or fifth season. A big announcement in there, actually. Uh, an adaptation of a TV version of Alien is in development. Yeah, I saw that. Did you know about this? Because I'd I never heard about it. I didn't before today, no. i got to say, yeah. I kind of feel like that is a... a um, IP suited for TV. I don't know why. I can see why you could go, oh, well, it's just an action, like, space adventure film. Yeah. But I do think there is something a bit more deep you could go into there for a series. I mean... There's definitely well world building they can explore. Yeah. that's. Yeah. I think you look at, again, Mandalorian. You People would have used to have said Star Wars 
it's a film. It's a, it's a movie franchise. But yeah. what we've seen, especially with Disney, is they can take these things with, you know, people like with a simplistic mind like myself yeah. might go, nah, there's not much there. What are you going to explore? There actually is a fair world where you could dive into with Alien that is pretty much untapped. I mean, even with the... Is there four films or three films I don't of know. Alien? If, if you include like Prometheus and Alien Covenant and stuff. Like yeah. Like, and then Predator whenever that there's crosses over. There's a bunch of... probably a lot. Yeah. But I, yeah, I kind of feel like that's... I was I was intrigued to see that one. Um, well, I thought that was interesting because earlier this year we had... Um, uh, what was it? Raised by Wolves, which I I think a lot of people thought was related to Alien because it was a Ridley watch Scott. It? Yeah, I did. I, I forgot bizarre, about this. Very yeah. bizarre show. Looked odd. It was good, but very bizarre. But it like wasn't. It didn't end up being related. And the, like Ridley Scott came out saying this isn't Alien, but it had like androids mm. who had like milk blood kind of thing, same as oh. Alien. So it was very close. And Ridley Scott also did Alien, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I always get the Scott brothers confused. Um. Okay, yeah, no, that was interesting. I thought that was, um, yeah, that's certainly going to be one I'll look at, Alien. Then the other ones for FX, I wasn't too familiar with. Nah, Didn't no mean idea. a whole heap to me. And then we moved on to, uh, so Disney Studios content. So you're looking at things like Lucasfilm, Marvel. But first, I wanted to look at animation. Yeah. Because animation had a, a little lot. bit going on. Yeah. Um, so obviously, let's talk Buzz Lightyear. So I, b- I believe it's just called Lightyear, yeah. which is going to be a new film. Uh, was it film or series? I think it was film. I think it's a film. Yeah, it's an original film. Chris Evans is Buzz Buzz Lightyear, the yeah. original Buzz Lightyear, the Space Ranger. Or is that what Buzz was, a Space Ranger? I think he was something. I think that was his term. Um, how do you feel about that? Well, I think the way that they described it, because I, I ended up watching the Investor Stream from about that point when they started the animation. Yep. And when he talked about this he was like now when everyone like when toy story came out the first toy story the idea of buzz lightyear was that he was based on an action movie character from Mm -hmm. this movie that they had always wanted to make anyway so this movie has been in their heads since the first (laughs) toy story okay they just haven't taken the time to make it yet. (coughs) yeah so it was always going to happen it's yeah interesting that they've decided now to pull it out yeah so the voice yeah, I, what, what do you think? Because, I mean, if you're making a toy based on a film, like that is the premise of what Buzz was, what, shouldn't the voice be the same? Yeah. Or close to. Close to. I mean, I don't really hear Chris Evans and Tim Allen close together. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. And I've seen that online. There's um, a lot of petitions. A lot of peti- people really? aren't. Yeah, people aren't happy about it. Oh, they'll get over it. I reckon... Well, it could be two things right so i mean you look at toy story toy story is done for the most part they've said that number four was it we all thought number three was it but contracts are now over for the cast of toy story so four was the final chapter i mean tim allen's old i also can't sound the same as he did he doesn't he doesn't i also kind of think he would have taken a paycheck like this if it was offered so i don't really know but i guess for prolonging the series into the future. I mean, again, talk about a an IP you can do a lot with. Yeah. I mean, this this light year show or movie could be a whole series. You, yeah. Why not? Yeah, it could so, have its own characters and stories and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. I think to get a Chris Evans now is probably good. And let's be honest, we live in a world where you know, how many Batman have there been? How many Spider-Man? Oh, things are recast have there all the time. And yeah. we'll probably get to the point where, you know, Tim Allen and Chris Evans will both play Buzz Lightyear in a crossover feature film. That's the world we live in at <laughs> yeah, the moment. So that's true. Um, I was excited for it. That that excites me a lot. I, I thought think that it will was, be really good. Yeah, it's enough nostalgia for me yeah. to really get invested, and then it looks cool enough where you're like, it, it, it's yeah, it, we're finally going to see Buzz in space. Yeah. I guess. So um, into that. Moana. Were you ever a Moana fan? Did you ever see it? I watched the movie, and I thought it was a good movie. Great, a series. great music, um, but I don't know why that. I feel the like these series are just milking it too far. There's a lot of them on Disney Plus. I've seen, I believe there's a Lilo and Stitch series. Um, oh, but there's been a Lilo and Stitch series since we were kids. Yeah, I guess. I, I, I've just noticed that there are a lot of. I think there's um, oh, is it Emperor's New Groove? 
a series? I think there might be a series of that as well. There seems to be a lot of um, adaptations from feature film into series on Disney+. Plus. I don't know if they've been around for a long time and yeah. now they're just being put on the streaming service or if they're new. Um, I believe there's even a Hercules series. So... It doesn't... I, I only know this because I walk past see my sister watching him and I'm okay. like, oh, that, I don't remember that from the movie and then I quickly realised, oh, this is episodic. Yeah. Um, also, Zootopia yeah, is getting again, another... They yeah. were always going to milk that. That did so well, they had to do something with Why it. Why is that taking so long? I don't know. It's a good point. When did that come out? Like, I'll look it up. 2000 and... I'm going to say 16. Random guess. Zootopia oh, oh, he's on the totally. money <laughs> Zootopia Yes 2016 um, Shocked that that's taken so long To turn around yeah. I mean there are certain ones Where Toy Story always took a long time To come out um, Even Monsters Inc The sequel to that Took a long time That was like 10 years or so Yeah but I yeah, I guess You could almost Draw a connection To the best ones uh, They take a little bit longer I also yeah, kind of Probably think- want to be real careful with it Because they know how well it did and yeah. you can't just throw out a sequel well I also kind of think it probably depends on the cast look at Toy Story how hard would it have been to get that all star cast together yeah. Yeah. with all their busy schedules Zootopia's got quite a cast as well I mean Jason Bateman's punch- punching out Ozarks yearly Yeah, and then every other movie is doing directing but um, is he even going to be in this? Because this episodic series thing is telling stories about all the side characters. So it almost seems like yeah. it's only possible because they're probably not going to have any big name actors in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's probably true. I reckon that's also a smart play with what Disney's doing. And let's from there we'll transition into... Let's finish. Let's come home strong with Star Wars at the end because it's going to take so much of your passion. Oh, there's also Marvel as well. I well, mean, that's, well, that's that's what I'm saying. Let's yeah. maybe dive into Marvel from here. All right. Yeah. Um, I need to get that list up. All right, you get that list <laughs> up because it. what I reckon they're doing really well, Disney, is the Avengers got to that point where super successful, making yep. all the money, but that cast is incredibly expensive. Oh, so. Yeah. Downey couldn't keep doing it. Can you imagine how much he was costing? It was, it was, I think I knew at one point it was something... It was ridiculous. Ridiculous. It, but he can ask for it and they will pay him. Yeah. But why would you do that when you've got all of this uh, wealth of characters? And, and what they've shown Marvel is, oh, we can take a character that is obscure and not really known about and make them a household name. Yep. Let's start again. So let's do it with, you know, I mean, we already know. Um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier from the from the series, but they were you know they're side, side characters, car- yeah, yeah. Side, side characters. Um, so that's what I feel like we're getting. Even, even the whole Vision stuff, um, we're now getting characters that are side characters, and even Black Widow. Their big tentpole film at the moment, Black Widow. Black Widow was not a main character. You could make the argument in the first one, I guess, but nah, she was she's never been she's never the, the star. Yeah. Nah, she's never the star. She's never that important. Same as um Hawkeye. So let's dive into Marvel. What did you think about what we saw? A lot of it we knew was coming with yeah. Marvel. Um, there was a couple of things I think maybe that we didn't, but more so we got looks at all yeah. of these. I things think that's what I was happy with because, uh, yeah, as you said, nearly all of the stuff we knew about, mm-hmm. and if we didn't know about it, there was leaks to say that it was going to be a thing. Yeah. So a lot of the casting announcements and stuff that they made were just cementing in leaks that we'd heard throughout the last year or two. Because mm-hmm. you know, there's a they're terrible at being able to hold these secrets, which yep. is fair enough. This is you know, multi million dollar names in a multi billion dollar company. You can't really keep it a hundred percent secret as well as they can push out on Twitter to say, nah, it wasn't me cast. And then we find out two weeks later that they were cast. Did you know about Owen Wilson in Loki? No, that was... A, that, that was well That done. shocked me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I haven't thought of Owen Wilson in quite some time. I know. I, he's just not really been around. But isn't... This is what they do well. Yeah. Marvel. As soon as you see him, you go, oh, I love that guy. Yeah. How good's that going to be? They yeah. do it with Star Wars and they do it with um, Marvel as well. So, yeah, that was where, for me, it sort of... That was my first thing I saw was Loki. Um, and God, that I'm so keen for that. Yeah. Oh, I think that was always one of the ones. Out of the three shows that we always knew about, four shows, like the WandaVision, the Falcon and Winter Soldier, um, Loki and Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. Those have been well known to be shows for a long time. Yep. Loki was always the one that I was like, this is going to be the good show for me. I yep. think this one will be interesting. There's so much I can do with it. 
And then it clearly looks like they're going to do a lot with it. Well, the, the thing they did so well with Loki was they built him to... His climax as a character in the film series was obviously being killed, but he was good in, yeah. that, in that moment. You yeah. were He was doing right. Yeah. And then we were sad. I was like, I was disappointed. I was like, oh my God, that's... Ah, oh, surely he's not dead. Remember that when you yeah. first saw... It was Infinity War he died in, wasn't it? No. Yeah, it was Infinity yeah, it's War. Yeah, like the yep. start of the movie. Yeah. It, yeah, first scene of the movie, Loki dies. Yeah. And straight away, you're sitting there like, nah, nah, nah. It's Loki. He's like, died before. Yeah, he's died before. He'll be yeah. back. And then we heard all the reports. No, that's it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I wasn't ready for that to end. We only yeah. just got to see the Loki we, we wanted. Yeah. And then... What do they do? Hit us with a series, which is set prior. Well, uh, I, it, I don't even it's really not, understand. It's set in... Because the thing that they... Because the Loki timeline is very... Well, they totally threw it out of whack in Endgame, which I think was the idea. Rather than him being resurrected or like just being alive again, which mm. is what he did in the second Thor. Like he died and it was a trick. He came back yeah. and now he died again, but that was a real death. But because they went back in time to the 2012 Avengers... Yes. And that was when he was uh, captured. Yes, yes. But then because they like messed around with things, he, still... he took the stone and disappeared. And that happens in Endgame. And that was the opening shot of the trailer for Loki. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. now it's the 2012 Loki who's now been able to escape that. Who is bad, mind you? Who is, yeah, who is bad? <laughs> He's, He's a very bad. bad. Guy. Yeah. Yeah, of course. See, that's, oh God. See, that's where Marvel can go. A little too complex for me because I'm a little simple. But yes, you are right in that. But it stops... he now exists because of the mess up of the timeline in Endgame. Yeah, but it like doing it that way stops all of the you know the people who have got you know the hundreds of pieces of paper on their wall mm-hmm. trying to string everything together, trying to find l- plot holes. They've covered all of that by just saying, "Well, he is dead, but we took yep. an earlier version of him and threw him into all of this." Yeah. So it's a different person now. It's interesting because why why did they feel the need to save him? I wonder. As in to why, make this, yeah, I guess to make this. But yeah. yes, there was. I think people were a fan of Loki. At by the end of everything, by the end of Endgame, we all came to like him. But Marvel plays such a long game, so oh, clearly yeah. this was in the works for so long. Yeah, what about banking on your your own creative teams? Go, no, nah, you'll have him over. By the end, they'll want this series. Pretty impressive. Oh, they know what they're doing. It's scary how good they are at this. If you had to said to me pre, I don't know, Infinity War, I, I couldn't have cared less about Loki. And even after Infinity War, I was kind of like, yeah, okay, I'm sad seeing him go. But I didn't realize I wanted a series until I heard there's a Loki series. And I thought that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, Loki looks good. Loki looks very good. What about, let's talk a little, little bit of animated what did you think about the What If series? I cannot wait for that. <laughs> and I think the reason why is just... It's always it's, a fun idea, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's all of the things that... You know, it's it's taking a lot of, I think, the obscure comics and putting them into what they mm. could have been if they were to be able to do a live action of it. Yeah. Which the one that's always stood out to me from the start and because they've... You know, when they announced What If, they kind of gave a few hints at what some things would be like. Mm. And one of those was Zombies. Yes, and the Marvel you zombies. You love Marvel yeah. zombies. That's it's one of your favorites. It's one of the comics that I've only ever read. Like all of the things. So did for. they hint towards that? Did they? Oh, is a shot in the thing? There's a zombie Captain America like running at the screen. Ah. And it's it's not going to be like the comics because the comics were horrifically gory and no, like yeah, it's not going to be that very violent and graphic. But uh, you know, if they can bring it into it and like even just follow briefly one of the many storylines that they put into that thing. Is It'd your understanding great. that it's going to be an adventure episodic series where each episode sort of is, is a standalone snapshot of I think one so. what if? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder it how seems long like, they'll be. Well, I, I don't know. They could be 20 minutes. They could be 40 minutes. It's probably going to be like Mandalorian episodes where it just depends on the yeah, story what being the story told. See, I don't mind that. That's yeah. okay. And it looks like it's going to kind of have some narrative to it because they've introduced the Watcher Mm. As a like narrator of the series, which I like. Yeah. I like that a series like this has a narrator. I, th- I think yeah. it gives it that gives it that story time feel. Where it's so like, he's probably just gonna be like in this universe and version mm. of Earth, we've seen this happen. Yep, and it allows for an explanation to happen before a, a bit of a setup of yeah, yeah. why this is happening, what this world looks like, 
and then bam, you're hit with um, uh, what's the name of Black Panther? <laughs> um, like the actor's name? No, 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 no. the actual character, like Chitala or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as Iron Man. As, oh yeah, yeah. True. That or, was one of the shots from the film. Or the like Captain Britain. Pe- Peggy yep. Carter is Captain America. Yeah, so yeah. that was a different take as well. So you get to see, um, you get to see these characters different. I know, like I've always heard the argument: there's an audience for Batman to be black, and we've never seen it. Yeah, and then this allows for that. So especially for Peggy to be uh, Captain America, that's cool. Yeah, there's a, probably a bunch of girls that are Captain America fans that are like, ah, oh, cool. Now I get to see that. Yeah, and I think it is a comic series. I'd like they're probably just yeah. pulling the more obscure on less marketable. Series. But not many people are across the comics, mate. That's the world we live in now. Yeah. So- well, I mean, I pr- probably have only out of all of the things I'll show have seen the zombies one. So that's the one that I'll be like, cool. That's what I'm keen for. But I will appreciate everything else that they throw out there because mm-hmm. it probably will be really interesting. Yeah. What did you think of uh, Ironheart? The idea of an Ironheart series. I don't really know anything about it. I'm pretty it's, sure... It's another comic. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a recent comic though. Like they only started it like a year or two ago. Because mm. I remember seeing like, I don't know, pictures on the Instagram or something of like a young girl who's really tech smart and builds all this stuff. Yeah. They needed to introduce, you know, the next level of Iron Man kind of thing into it. Mm-hmm. And I think people always had the gist that it was going to be her. So bringing her into a series is obviously showing that she's not going to be as important as like an Iron Man, which I think is good. You don't want Iron Man again as your main Avengers leader. You want to change the team. Because it's, uh, it is animated, isn't it? I don't know. I don't, I think it's live action. Oh, is it live action? I I was under the impression it it was, um, I was under the impression it was animation, but yeah, I, I know what you, I know what you mean in terms of it's, you don't, you want the Iron Man character. You want that element in your in your stories, I think. Yeah, but I don't know that you want them back in the head. No. You want to change out your A-team. Yeah. But now that they have the series available, you can just do more. Mm. So I don't know that... Like, there'll probably be crossovers between her and movies or at least callbacks. But I think that's... Like, I hope it's what they're going to be doing in that... The series and the movies are just linked by like cameos and callbacks. Yeah. There might be the overall plot line of the movies that flow through the TV shows, Mm -hmm. but the TV shows won't flow through the movies. Same with like the early Marvel TV shows, like Avengers, uh, sorry, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Peggy Carter one and stuff like that. Yeah. They followed the storyline of the movies. But the movies never follow the storyline of the series. You don't think we're going to see Matt Murdock show up in Spider-Man? I really hope we do. It's but that's, sounding like we're going to. Yeah, but again, like that's a kind of cameo from the series coming into it. Oh, okay, so you're saying that characters might yeah. feature in feature films, but you shouldn't their expect stories... To, yeah, you, you're not yeah. expected to know their life story by watching all of their TV show. They'll well, be I introduced not, enough. There is, there's too much to watch. That yeah, was there my... Is. That was my concern from the start. And it seems to be, at this point in time, touch wood, what Star Wars are doing well. The Star Wars seem to be setting it up to, yep, yeah, we've got our features and we've also got a galaxy, which is, yeah. you know, I mean, Yoda was, what, 900 when in like Return of the Jedi or whatever it was, 900 years old or something. Something like something that. Like that. Yeah. There's talk now of uh, one of the new films potentially having a 300-year-old Yoda. So like yeah. the time frame allows for everything to be very disconnected yeah marvel my concern is these are all characters that are interacting with each other in film previously therefore you've now set the precedent that they exist in the same universe at the same time whether or not you know you have a spider-man or the multiverse of madness the yeah um maybe that can muddle with the timeline a well little i think bit. they've already opened that up with endgame because that messed with the timeline and so now mm. they at least have the option to go back and do either like a something from the history or something that's changed now yeah and they've always had the wider universe thing with guardians of the galaxy and stuff like that mm. so something out in space is an option yeah but it's you know it's less marvel to do a space tv series than a guardians movie you know 
Yeah. I think what I want at the moment, we're certainly not going to get it because of Spider-Man, but and Doctor Strange as well, I guess. Those two films are very much going to be crossover films where you're going to have numerous characters. I'm very ready for Marvel to give me give me some standalone stuff. Like that's I think that's what I like about Loki. And it's why I'm loving Mandalorian. Yes, there's cameos in Mandalorian. Yep. But it's not, you know, there's a team up episode, but the series or film in this matter isn't based around look at all these people together. Like they're all so here you want for this. back in the like early the Iron Man movie yeah, and the I, Thor I'm movie. ready for that. Let's yeah. start setting up characters again. One to make me think about it. Whether that's a series, I'd prefer it to be a series at yeah. this point. Give me a series. I'm loving them. Uh, but let me invest in these characters for who the character is rather than, oh, I'm here for, I kind of like him, kind of like them, really like that one. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like they need to sell me again. Yeah. And they did it with Iron Man. They did it with Thor by the third film. <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah. um, Captain America, obviously. They've got the ability to do it, but they've now set this standard of Marvel let all their characters play together. Yep. And I think they're kind of stuck there. I yeah, feel well, like there's an looks expectation. Like that's what they're doing now anyway. You look at all of the new stuff that's in the slate and the only stuff with original people in like kind of one movie... Mm. Uh, well, not even they're, the only people that seem to be together are like that are on their own are in the series. Aside mm. from the Black Widow movie, everything else and maybe Shang Chi, I don't know anything about it. Look like they're at least some sort of team up movie. Yeah, yeah. So you've got uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You've got well, even Wonder Vision. I yeah, guess really. I mean, people. Yeah. The only like you've got She Hulk, which looks like it'll be a more original character thing. But even that, they've said is going to have Mark Ruffalo and. Um, yeah, exactly. So, but, and I, yeah. I understand the idea of it. Like, if you've got She Hulk, right? There'd be a lot of people being like, why, why would I watch that? Like, we've got, why aren't you giving us a Hulk series? And it sounds like it will be a Hulk series. Yeah. Because it, it'll have the two of them. Yeah. And Tim Roth back, which was the shock to me. That was like. You were, you were really shocked by this. I reckon I've seen, was that the Hulk or just Hulk? Hulk. Which one was Eric Banner? He was the Eric Which... Banner Hulk. He, he oh. was he was in the Eric Banner Hulk. He was the bad guy in that one. I think. I'm pretty sure. Because wasn't... Um, I need to double check this. Yeah, double check it. Because that seems strange to pull a character or an actor playing the same character from a Hulk film that is not considered Well, MCU. it is considered, apparently. Because Eric Banner's one. Oh, uh, uh, maybe, maybe I've got the Hulks the wrong way around. Hang on. Have a look. Because there was the other one with... Um, Edward Norton. Edward Norton. I'm pretty sure Edward Norton. It might be the Edward Norton one. Yeah, okay. But I thought it was... Pretty sure. Pretty sure I've got you. It was, yes. It was the Edward Norton one, which was the more depressing one. That was a very depressing one. Star Wars is your realm. It's coming up. It's coming up. (laughs) I'm falling out of all of this stuff, to be honest. (laughs) It's too hard. COVID's pulled me out of it. Um, But still, yeah, that... Yeah, Tim Roth. So why... I can't even really remember Hulk. And I remember every time I've gone back to watch... You know, in the build up to Infinity War and build up to Endgame, I'd do the I'd do the whole thing. I'd go back, watch all the movies yeah. again. Always skipped Hulk. And, yeah, and no everyone one really considers it. No, part no of one it. considers it. But so, it's got Tony Stark, it's got Robert Downey yeah, Jr. in it. Everyone forgets that. Yeah. I certainly had forgotten it. But what about Tim Ross character being back is so surprising? Well, that was just a surprise that they are now really considering that movie Canon, set in yeah. stone. I also don't remember whether his character died or not. I would have or just like Who does he play? Is it the abomination? A... Oh, He's like the big okay. crazy looking Hulk. So wow. I don't know like how he will fit back into it. That's that I was just shocked. Like I was not expecting it. Hmm. It was different. Do we know what the timeline's gonna be for it? Do no we know idea. what it said? No, no idea what the story is, no idea. The yeah, timeline. I guess well, yeah. If it's set I don't know, back around the timeline of that film, maybe. Yeah, but I mean, like, then it's like, well, has she been around this whole time? What's she been doing? I think that's the problem with a lot yeah. of the stuff now is that if they're introducing characters, they have to introduce them now because hmm. if they've introduced them in a, like, history sense, where have they been? Why didn't you help out with... Well, that was the that was the argument with Captain Marvel, wasn't it? They, yeah, they... and they tried to play it off that she was out in yeah. helping other... They tried to explain it, but at the end of the day, we're still... We're not that dumb of an audience and we are obviously too smart for our own good. Yeah. And a lot of the time it becomes, no, no, we want a proper explanation here. Yeah. Um, so Captain Marvel drew that criticism when it was already kind of well explained to a degree. If it was just someone stuck on Earth, you'd be like, where were you? Yeah. yeah. I think that's what you're going to find though. It goes back to your point about 
end game and the timeline being messed up, I think that could be their out for a lot of yeah. this. I think, and it's a it's kind of a cop out, but I think it's there. It, it's obvious. It's yeah, there they for the would, taking. They would have planned it as a setup to be able to open themselves up for yeah. more things. Mm. And there's a lot of things. Yeah. What else? Uh, what about WandaVision? We got a little bit more WandaVision in the latest trailer. I'm I, looking forward to it. It looks so bizarre. I'm beyond looking forward to it. This is the thing Marvel's put out. I might. I don't want to go too big of a statement here. I, I, gonna, I don't know I if you're. Go really I can't tell if you're really stating that you're going to hate it or you're loving looking forward to it. No, no, l- loving what I'm seeing. Okay, cool. You said it really split there that I wasn't sure if you were going to go. Nah. I think this looks terrible. This could end up. I, this has vibes for me of being the Mandalorian of Star Wars for me, where I sit back and I go, "Oh, that's the best thing I've ever seen in this. Yeah, in this realm. Yeah, it factor absolutely it all in. looks like. Now I do have to say, Iron Man One is just. It's almost the perfect superhero film for me. So there are movies and... You know, no, uh, yeah. I'm going to stand by it. This has me the most... This is the most anticipated thing. At least TV series related for Marvel that I've seen. And that includes Daredevil. Includes all that good shit. This just has me... Oh, it's because just, I know... It's so different. Yeah, it's so different. And I love the contrast of what it presents in the visuals. Yeah. And what you can... It also presents as being the underlying tone of the series, which is sadness. And it, it presents this upbeat. I mean, in the new trailer, at points, they're in the Brady Bunch house is what it looks like. So it's this sort of pop culture, um, nostalgic. It almost comes off to me like she's trying to create a world of happiness. Yeah. And, and in years gone by, things that represented happiness to her, putting herself and vision in that setting to escape the mental demons that it's she heavy. has. That's it's very heavy. heavy. <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't be more intrigued to see how they pull it off. And I've got a lot of faith that they'll pull it off. I reckon yeah. because are you of the belief that she's going to be the new big bad for the foreseeable future in the films? What What do you think moving forward? Her? No. No? No. I think um, Jonathan Majors uh, is playing, was cast as the... God, now I can't remember his name. Um, some dude who like jumps around in time travel and steals stuff from the past and future and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Can't remember his name, but he is the bad guy in the new Ant-Man movie. And he's a big enough bad guy throughout the comics, I believe, that I think he's the next Thanos. You've killed me here. I've got to find this. Uh, he's Jonathan Majors is the actor's name. I love him because he was in uh, Lovecraft Country and was an incredible performance in that show. Here we go. Um, ah, Kang the Conqueror. Yeah, him. He's a big enough bad guy that I think he would be a but, series style bad guy. But, so look at Thanos, right? Thanos made appearances. Yeah. And then we only really got Thanos after a while. There was building to that. You look at there was builds to Thanos when Loki was still the main sort of Bad guy. threat at mm. the time or one of. I don't know. Do you not think that WandaVision has a further reaching impact on the Marvel Universe than just this series? But I think that goes back into, well, then they want, like, is it going to be super important to have watched WandaVision to understand the movies coming, you know? I, I thought their understanding was that they that was the intention. It probably is, but I mean, <laughs> is that like, just you hoping it's not? I hope it's not because it's a lot of commitment, and I don't know Jeez. that I can these days make that commitment. Yeah. If you asked me three years ago, I would have been all over it. Yeah, I just think that now they've got. Ah, oh, yeah. uh, look, I don't know. I, I kind of just think I've heard so much about the potential for that to be the case that yeah. I've bought into it. Um, but yeah, what I. Have you, is there any other Marvel on that list that we should touch on? Because there is one more Marvel story I want to touch on. Um, they okay. got lost in the week that I'll was. I'll just do it real quickly. There's yep. the Miss Marvel, which is the character that I think is a recent, like the Pakistani girl. Yeah, that's um, going to be a feature, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Um, Hawkeye TV series, Moon Knight, which is... Um, Wait, yeah, let's... The guy from Game <laughs> of Thrones, I think, is playing him. I don't know if it's official, but that was who was always cast as him. Uh, uh, Kit, guy- Kit Harrington. No, it's not. It's the guy from Star Wars. Oh, is it? Yeah. What's your what mate? What was he playing it? Maybe Who's he's... Poe? The guy that plays Poe. Really? Isn't it? I don't know. I thought it was him. Maybe he was cast in Eternals. Oh, hang on. 
I know he was cast in something, although or leaked to cast in something. Moon Knight. I get confused between character that character and the people in Eternals. Eternals because they're like space people. Here we go. Is this Moon Knight here? Yeah. He's the guy with the like associative disorder or whatever it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's Oscar Isaac. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. I thought it was. Um, yeah, so he's going to be Moon Knight, which intrigued the shit out of me. Last time I spoke about Moon Knight on this was with Mitch, and at that time it was rumoured to be um, Shia LaBeouf. That's who was going to be Moon Knight. No, that would have been interesting. Yeah, Mitch was very excited about that whole yeah. concept. But um, I, Oscar Isaac, I mean, I mean... He's a good actor. He's a good actor. He's a good actor. Um, yeah, so Moon Knight, what else was there? Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Now, that's something I'm excited for because... Talk to me about this. Now, I don't understand in that, is this meant to be a joke? I think so. So, for those unaware, there'd be a lot of people aware. The yeah. Star Wars holiday special is a... Very old and quite infamous. It's yeah. uh, it's not. Is it remembered fondly now for the fact that it was? It's a cult sp- movie now. You know, yeah. it's like it's like the, the room. room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throw your spoons at it. I yeah. guess. Can you even see Star Wars a holiday special? I or- think it's on Disney Plus. So they did release it. I heard there was so. rumblings of should they release it? Should they not? So this is. My impression is this is like a parody to that. Oh, I think it 100% will be, especially because James Gunn is writing and directing it. And he is like, he said, he came out and he's like, I loved the Star Wars holiday special, so I can't wait to make this. <laughs> and that's already saying that this is going to be bizarre. Yeah. Now, have you seen the Star Wars holiday special? I haven't. I've seen bits of it. Yeah, I've only seen bits too. But, it was quite yeah. hard to find for a long time. I know there was the... Like Chewie's family or something. There was the there was a bunch. There of- was a lot of weird things, but apparently they've been pulling a lot of the things out of that and back. Like in the Mandalorian, a lot of things from the Mandalorian were from the Star Wars Holiday Special. Really, you know, they bring little things in. Okay, as just like that's real. That that's it. We're acknowledging it. Yeah. Okay. So we're getting a Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, and that's for this year. Is that is that coming out or is that next year? Oh, I think it'll be next year. Oh, okay. So that's not something that's yeah. like guess what's around the corner. Nah, I think it, he'd probably would be writing it after he'd finished writing Suicide Squad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. And was there anything else? Any last um, I am Groot. TV yeah, series little, was well, inevitable. Well, it sounds like it's more like little mini. Yeah, I think clips. it's like a baby Groot. Kind of thing, like it's a kids. It'll be a kids show. Yeah, little short, sharp uh, clips of Groot. Yep. Yeah. Um, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. I think that'll be an important one for the next stage. As Been I said, hugely forgotten about since number yeah. two. Um, obviously, we saw a bit of a conclusion to that in Endgame. Endgame. Yeah, he came back. Um, but yeah, the whole the quantum realm is. It really opens up them to do more stories because that kind of goes into the multiverse in a way that they can like go around and stuff i think i wonder what the release schedule for no well doctor strange must come before that i think so i think all of this stuff is just three years yeah i think it's 2022 or 2023 is the the Mm -hmm. length of all of these things Mm -hmm. um shang chi and the legend of the ten rings know very little about i know nothing about i think they're filming it here though Um, okay uh then we got uh, thor love and thunder which you know Mm. everyone's super excited about after the last one and bringing back natalie portman and christian bale Bale is the big bad yeah no nothing about his character he's playing but still christian bale is a big bad guy in the marvel movie Mm -hmm. couldn't go wrong uh blade remake of that or at least a new version i hope that gets off the ground i think it will i never saw the original to be honest you've never seen blade not seen blade mate the, to be honest, you know, you know when you watch those movies as kids, any movie that is, and you just you think it's a work of art. You're like, yeah. this is the best thing I've ever seen in yeah. my life. Blade Two was my yeah. favorite. Blade One, I I reckon I've only seen a couple of times, but it was okay. I don't really remember it. Blade Two, so cool, and I thought it was the most badass show ever. I used to watch it religiously, but then you have seen it reviewed and stuff like there was this <laughs> yeah, list it's like uh, terrible yeah, yeah the worst superhero movies of all time and it was like num- it was out of 50 and it was it was like number 22 or something i was like oh shit i thought that was like like art yeah but like, through the reviews <laughs> it's your opinion that matters <laughs> so the idea of blade is very cool especially with mahershala ali i think he's oh uh, he would he's an incredible actor yeah and would be great in a role as much like as that. i love wesley snipes in that role much prefer this moving forward yeah. and that the, the expectation is that's a feature, though, isn't it? It will be, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, along with obviously Guardians Three, mm-hmm. which they are uh, they're filming that alongside the holiday special wow. at the same Naturally, time. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, Captain Marvel 2 was always going to happen. Black Panther 2 without. Yeah, so it um, sounds like he's without uh, Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, so maybe they're handing it off to his sister in the movie or something like that. They Apparently, they just really wanted to make it to like... Um, Celebrate. Yeah. No, I don't buy that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> I don't buy that at all. It's, it's just, very touchy We want to do it in his honour. Fuck yeah, off. You want to keep making money on it. Uh, which is fine. Like, yeah. it, it's not at and all. And they will make money off it. Yeah. And It'll be like the Fantastic Four. Oh, sorry. The, well, I, that, I've just dropped another one that's coming out. But yeah. the... Um, yeah, true. We've got to talk about Fast that. and the Furious after... What's his name? Passed away in the car accident. Oh, Paul Walker. But yeah, and everyone went and saw the next one. You can hardly compare them though. Oh, yeah. No, uh, you can't. <laughs> but it's like everyone... I know what you That mean. movie made so much money yeah. off of him. Yeah. Which um, is kind of sad to say, but... Well, I guess... And the... Only thing that I can... I always hate when this happens. I hate it because it. I'm OCD and I like things the way they are. The reality is we never got the explanation for what happened yeah. to his Black Panther. Mm-hmm. The kind of good thing is, is that the first Black Panther film starts and you get that explanation of there's been Black Panthers before. Yeah. So they've inadvertently set up for... Being this, able to change it out. Yeah, like you could... There's no reason why you can't start another film and tell the story of what happened. How do you explain it? I don't know. How do you do it tastefully? To, I mean, they're going to have to kill him off. Yeah. Chadwick Boseman's Black Panther. I mean, they, they could have had this in the back of their heads because he has been unwell for some time. Yeah. They could have had contingencies to say, in the worst case scenario, mm. Mm. either maybe, are you happy for us to do this? Yeah. You would hope that they've had that discussion with him. They would have to, have, yeah, they? or at least his family. Yeah, I guess the reality of it is, it just it's going to become. He will be alongside the other, the spirits of the Black Panther. I can't remember how they represent it. You know what it gave me vibes of when I watched Black Panther was the way that Mufasa is displayed yeah. in The Lion King, <laughs> yeah. like that sort of. Simba's looking into the river or whatever, and then he looks up and he almost sees him in the stars. Yeah, the, that's like, how ethereal. I, vision yeah, of him. I remember there being a tree where like a lot of the Black Panthers were, and they were in a tree or something. I can't remember, but I just as long as yeah. they don't throw him out like Carrie Fisher CGI style, yeah. all in your face. Like either don't show him at all, or if you'd filmed some things, that you could at least have him as like that kind of mentor in a couple of important key moments. Yeah. Just leave him out of it. Well, and and that's where there was a bit of confusion. There was a story released where it said Black Panther to continue without recasting Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. That was interpreted different ways. So wait. I interpret that as they're not recasting his the character, character. Yeah. yeah which i think would be the smart thing to do yeah you would think there were some people that were like so does that mean you're gonna like continue to use him in that cg fashion yeah but, but i hope not i mean they can do it and yeah. make it look good now but like it's they that's... can but I've, i kind of feel like that's distasteful i guess yeah because you know who's getting that money i mean obviously the family will get the money but like how much are you paying it's somebody yeah. that's not here anymore um, and yeah, yeah. okay, so, so that, Black Panther 2 happening. And then the last two would be Fantastic Four and uh, Doctor Strange 2. All right, so I let's let's deal ones. with Doctor Strange 2 first. So obviously we're going to get Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, Sam Raimi directing it. Sam Raimi directing it. What? Huge. There, I was under the impression for a long time, when we're talking these Spider-Man coming back. Yeah. I was picturing Spider-Man 3 being where that's going to happen. I think it's going to be this. I feel like, you know, this is the Sam Raimi film. Why wouldn't he bring his yeah. character back in this? Is Tom Holland expected to be in this? I have no idea. When they announced the cast, like the key cast, mm. they didn't say any of the Spider-Man. They just said the Doctor Strange 1 characters. Yeah. What do you think? I think the movie could be great. It sounds like they're really going for like a thriller, almost horror vibe in some senses. Like, as they said, it's going to be like a Mm. a dark, kind of scarier movie. And I'm all for that with these types of movies. Mm. You know, when you have so many light, not even light, like there are some kind of heavy moments in a lot of these films, but for the most part, they're a fun action flick. When you start giving them more grounding into something very different, it can go, it can be either terrible, like uh, New Mutants was, like that was them trying to make a horror superhero movie. Yep. But 
telling it terribly Mm. or it could be amazing because it's just so different. Do you think that they're realistically... With the, so this is going to be, by bringing Spider, if they do bring various Spider-Man back, you got Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, which are Spider-Man from a very family-friendly franchise. Both yeah, I them. mean, Tobey Maguire's one had some pretty heavy things in it. But for the time, that yeah. was that was as lies. It's like when people look back on Batman 89. They were. At the time, yeah, people yeah. were like, oh yeah, you took the kids to that. Now you look back and you're like, very gothic, very yeah. dark. It's because times have changed. So when that Spider-Man came out, though, that was a family film. Yeah. You took your kids to it. So there's going to be that, okay, we want to appeal to families still because it's Spider-Man. You know, it's Spider-Man the thing can't... in that as well is like, you know, Tobey Maguire is an older guy now. Mm-hmm. Is he going to be like an older Spider-Man who's seen some stuff in his time? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And... The best version of this movie is that. Yeah. I just don't know if I'm sold that Marvel... Are willing to alienate. I don't think it'll be too dark, no. It'll yeah. still obviously have the family element to it. What but... I'm saying is, I don't think it'll be as dark as we'd like it to be. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, boy, it would have been cool yeah. if it was. Um, it'll be the same with The Flash. Like, it's going to be an action family yeah. light film. And it just, that's as just long how as it's not cheesy. Yeah. That's all that I... Like, you know, if they can get away with a few dark moments or something like mm, that, mm. but as long as they're not just throwing things in your face, like, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Yeah, hey. with, like, little quippy catchphrases. Yeah. Um, super excited for it. If they can pull it off, great. I do think we need to see all three, though. If you're going to do it, you need to have Tom Holland in there, too. Oh, yeah. You um, can't not have him in it. It would be a missed opportunity. Especially with... Consider- he's the, now considered the best Spider-Man, I think. Yeah. yeah. And also, it's been heavily suggested that moving forward with Iron Man now gone, that Doctor Strange will act as the mentor to Spider-Man. So, it makes sense for him to show up. That's fine. Let's talk Fantastic Four. So happy. Yeah. I, I'm not going to sit here and present to be some massive Fantastic Four fan. I'm a really big fan of what the idea of the Fantastic Four is yeah. and what it could be. But I've never been one that's, you know... I mean, there has the argument is there's never been a good movie. Well, so I, what's see, there to be I, I to get behind? I loved the original two movies as a kid. I remember the Silver Surfer one yeah. quite fondly. But I haven't watched it since I was a kid. I haven't either. But no. to me, in my memory, this is those your are this is your blade too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, I don't know that I was that big of a fan of them, <laughs> but I enjoyed them. Yep. The the new released one that was like 2015 or whatever was had potential, but then oh, oh it was the it was garbage. Yeah. That was um that was Blade Two. Mm. Looking at it currently, mm. um that was a terrible movie. <laughs> Just so much wrong with it. Uh, and yeah, I think they've seen now what doesn't work so you really want to hope i think the thing is that it just opens up so many more characters that are important to the other characters does fantastic four allow for time factors like do they i think it does they you know they've just built all these machines they can jump between i think it could come in from like the multiverse thing Mm. maybe they were on another earth and that way they're set up they don't need another origin story yep like what they did with spider-man don't give him another origin origin story we don't need it yep so do you think from there then if we've got the fantastic four coming in can marvel do this it's going to be hard. No, can they do it without casting John Krasinski? No. <laughs> and almost, I would say, as important, Emily Blunt. They need the, yeah, I was, they have, if you cast one, you have to cast them both. Yeah, and I, don't, I just don't think at this point you can't not cast John Krasinski. I think it's so heavily... But I think petition for online by fans that it's and but now Disney everyone have sees proved it. that they that they, they will follow these yeah. fan castings. Yeah. Like Rosario Dawson yeah, was that... fan cast. Yep. She was like ninety nine percent fan cast as Ahsoka and got it. They've got her. Don't yeah, they? They, they have, have to. to. Yeah. And the other thing is John Krasinski isn't does that not feel like the most Marvel fit ever? He's also an incredible, like, like he could write and produce it. Yeah. Like, you know, he's done great with, like, Quiet Place and things like yeah. that. Yeah, super talented. Yeah. Nice guy. That's the sort of guy you want to put out on a press tour. Uh, able to do comedy, able to do serious. I mean, we're sending him in Jack Ryan. He can do action. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect casting. Couldn't be better. What are we, if they do not cast 
John Krasinski, I will come on here. Boycott the movie. And publicly shame it and boycott it. <laughs> yeah. No, I just think that they have to. It's it's too uh it's it's too there for the taking. Like You'd you've be got shocked to take if they it. don't. Considering yep. how many people are fan cast these days by Disney. Yep. They'll do it. All right. Let's shift gears to Star Wars. Yeah. All right. There's, there was so much release that we're probably gonna miss. Well, we will in miss this a lot, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, just I'm not going to make people sit here for too long listening because, it, you know, it, there's too much. Let's jump into Star Wars because that was probably... Well, Lucasfilm, yeah. I guess, because what I do want to start with is Indiana Jones. Yeah, that really flew under the radar. That hasn't been brought up by, you know, anything. It's kind of just... It's been sort of like simmering away for a while, but never... It, it was never getting to that point in production where it actually felt like it was going to happen. It's yeah. had numerous directors... Numerous writers have come on. Um, Which are always huge red flags in the, what's yeah, the movie going to turn out being. Exactly. And also, why is it being made? Yeah. It's not being made with a purpose. Usually, the best movies are made where somebody pitches to a studio, this is my idea for this. Great. When a studio goes, hey, we want to do another one of these. Yeah. Well, then you just start throwing shit at the wall and see yeah. what sticks. So, um. The last installment of Indiana Jones depends who you ask. I didn't. Uh, didn't, didn't like yeah, it. it didn't really hold up to the original three. Uh, so this would be Indiana Jones five, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm still intrigued, but I am one of the ones that saw this as being a good opportunity to reboot it. Yeah, I mean, they're bringing Harrison Ford back and is it going to be that he passes it on to someone? Because I feel like that's what they were trying to do with the fourth one with Shia LaBeouf's character, yeah. like pass it on. But the movie was just terrible and you couldn't pass it on to anything. But also, like, Indiana Jones is a person. He is, yeah. You know what I mean? It's not a it's not a character. It's not a, a mantle. It's not a, you know, a, a legend to pass on. It, it's a human being. Yeah. So the idea of passing it on, I, I kind of feel like that's why it didn't work in number four. Yeah. Um, I just kind of thought like, and this is now being, so I think the writer of Logan is now on board to write, and James Mangold, I think, is I'm who is sure. doing I this one. But seen it. Uh, so I mean, and, yeah, and yeah, th- this is, is being presented as the last story of Indiana Jones, which you know that's all well and good, but I. I one, I think there's more Indiana Jones stories that can be told. Two, definitely. I, I think that it's been so long since number four, and Harrison Ford is old as shit. Is it going to be believable to see certain elements of what he's doing on this film? Um, you know, action wise. No, not at all. It's it's just it's a bit too far gone. It was one thing to have him in Star Wars running around, you know, shooting and whatever, yeah. but. This, it kind of feels like it needs to be a young guy. He also, he's almost like James Bond. He needs to have a bit of sex appeal about him, Indiana Jones. If you think about it, like, yeah, Indiana always got the girl. He was, I don't know, there's just this something missing. And it's also the fact that the bloody internet ruined it with their fan casting of Chris uh, Pratt. I have not seen that. Yeah, as as it was going it, around. Like it was going around for a long time. Can you not just see that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see it. Wouldn't it be great? <laughs> yeah. And we're not getting it. So, if this is, in fact, the last Indiana Jones story, and Spielberg's come out and said, obviously, it's Spielberg's baby, he's like, this has to be Harris- Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones. Yeah. That's some horseshit. All right? That's, like, let's be honest. As we said earlier, we live in a world where things are recast, properties are continued. Why would we stop here? Yeah. It just seems a bit, I don't know, a bit strange. I would prefer it to keep going, but... We're getting another Indiana Jones. Uh, interested? Will you see it? I'll see it. I'm not expecting anything from it. No, neither. Low expectations. Yeah. The same expectations I had for Rambo 4, Last Blood. I was like, mm, <laughs> I know what this is going to be. <laughs> um, Don't think I saw past the first one, to be honest. Well, you yeah, you didn't really miss out. Um, what was next? So we let's dive into Star Wars. All right. Where do we begin? Let's start with animated. Okay. All right. And let's ease our way in. Yeah. So we're getting... Bad Batch. Bad Batch, which is an animated yeah, series. which I'm excited for. So, this is where I, I... I hate... There's too many diehard Star Wars fans out there. They know this if they listen to this, that I like to bring somebody on that knows a bit more than I do about it. 
Any origin to the Bad Batch? Any background? Or is this just... I mean, if you look like history-wise, mm. like of writing the stuff, mm. I think they were supposed to be introduced back in like 2015. Okay. Like midway through because the, you know, the Clone Wars series is going on for 10 years or whatever. Um, it's been around for a long time. These guys have been in production basically since about halfway through. They were supposed to mm. be brought in. The episodes that were in, that they were introduced in season seven of the Clone Wars. Yeah were already out available for the last like three years as voiced uh, voiceover storyboard like videos oh so like because they thought like the people who made them thought they'd never get released the people that made them for clone wars? like the episodes of them for the clone wars thought that they'd never get released there was i don't know what the problem was or something but they... so there was a belief at one point clone wars season seven wouldn't happen oh well, yeah the, the clone wars stopped and then yeah, people i thought there was a long for it time to be brought back yeah and that's why they did it because they wanted to close it out at the right time. Like, you know, yeah. it's supposed to close at the, you know, at the Order 66, which mm. is now what they've done. And then this series, I don't know that they ever intended on making an original series, but everyone has known about these characters for some time mm. because, like, the diehard Star Wars fans. I didn't before season seven, yeah. but apparently they've been well known about because of all of the problems with getting them into production. Mm -hmm. Now that they were in there and everyone loved them, they're obviously are like, you know, we can kind of make another season of the Clone Wars without it being the Clone Wars. So is which that it sounds what like the... what it's doing because okay. it looks like it's following on from the end of the Clone Wars season seven. Yeah, like the Order sixty six animation style seems to be the same. Yeah, and yeah. that's the other thing as well is like you know every Star Wars animation has a totally different style to it, mm. except this and the Clone Wars. It's clearly a Clone Wars sequel. Yeah, as without being the next season. Okay, but it does look like. In that sense, it's not aimed directly at kids because obviously, if you, you know, the more you watch through the Clone Wars, the darker it gets. Yeah, you they start know I'm going through this struggle at the moment. Yeah, so yeah, they it start starts realizing very the target audience. Yeah, and season seven was definitely, aside from one arc in there, definitely not really aimed at kids. There was a lot of dark things in that, mm -hmm. and then this following directly on from that, and even in the trailer, you can tell while it's, it's going to be more family friendly, it's not going to be entirely family friendly. Yeah. Yeah, look, I'll give it a go. I think, do, is your understanding it'll be important to have seen Clone Wars? For that, yeah. Yeah, see, so that's, that's because, a huge that's, commitment. That's why I think it's more of like a season eight of the Clone Wars. Because it does seem mm. like it's a, a following on. And it's going to have the characters jumping between and stuff like that. Yeah. Whoever survived. Okay, so we're excited for the Bad Batch. Then. I am. I think it'll be good. Um, and then the other animated thing is visions which i think sounds incredible yeah so what's your understanding of what visions was i was all they said was that it's a bunch of stories set in the star wars universe mm -hmm. that have been directed and made by some of the world's best anime creators now i've never really been a big anime fan but they obviously have been regarded as some of the best stories of all time like you mm -hmm. look at the um what are those films spirited away like yeah that uh, i've never watched any of them but they're often regarded as like you know, yeah. some of the best films of all time. So do you think that one, I guess this is almost the Star Wars answer to the what ifs, I guess. Yeah, it, I think that's what it was going to be. Sort of just like standalone yeah. stories, yeah. each episode being individual. And each episode sounds like they're being made by a different artist. So therefore, a different animation style for yeah. each episode, potentially. Yeah, I mean, I mean which we kind of, the people who have watched the animated series are used to, because Rebels is very different to... Clone Wars, and then the other one that they brought out is very different to the other two. But for each episode yeah. to be different is that's contrasting. Yeah. And to, to be, be like that drawn anime style, I think as well would yeah. be very huge. There's been fan films made in anime style. There was this Tie Fighter one on YouTube that I think it goes for like half an hour that I've watched, and it is incredible. Yeah. So it's proven to have worked. What's the Netflix show um, that's epi like sort of standalone episodes? Uh, Love. Love, sex, love, death, and robots. No, not that. No, not space related. It's that um, the first ones where the pre uh, prime minister has to bonk the pig. <laughs> oh, Black Mirror. Black Mirror. Yeah, yeah. kind of get Black Mirror vibes from it. You watch it one be, episode yeah. of Black Mirror, you go into the next one, you're like, this is a totally different thing. Yeah. At least this is all set in the realm of Star Wars. Yes. So, um, it'll have some connections through it. But, yeah, yeah, that'll be cool. And now droids. Is your understanding that's animated? I don't or... think it's going to be animated. You think it's going to be live action? Yeah. And so my understanding of what droids is, is that... Well, it, it seems unclear. Do you think it's going to be 
R2D2 and um, C3PO. C3PO sort of like guiding another droid, like a new droid, or is it a human? Well, what's your understanding? I haven't really heard anything about it, to be honest. Yeah, I my understanding into was it, it's a new droid that well, they're going to introduce. I thought, from what I've heard loosely, is that it's stories told from the perspectives of R2 and C3PO, mm. which we've had a lot of because there's a lot of arcs in the Clone Wars which are droid stories. Yeah. And I think it's going to be that, but live action, and they will introduce new droids into it. Yeah. Which we know can work because you look at all of the droids that have been introduced in the standalone films and the sequel trilogy, yeah, they can do that well. Yeah. Every time they do it, it's a hit. Well, that's that's what I think. It, it seems like a fantastic opportunity to yeah. do, for merch. Oh, Merchandise. But, that, <laughs> but like also, they do the character so well. Like uh, yeah. it was at Rogue One, the Alan Tudyk's the tall droid. Yep. Like yeah, his death was that's emotional. How, that's so true. I'd forgotten about yeah. that. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, that uh, droids, I'm interested. I'll, I'll, yeah, tra- I'll tune in and see what you know, it's that's about. That's probably but... bottom of my list, but yep. I'll still watch it. What do we got? I love that I've just sort of thrown this all on you. You've, you've got it up there on your <laughs> I've phone. I've the list. Yeah. Um, all right, I'll go from what I know the least about. Rangers of the New Republic. Yeah. So, do you have any understanding of what this could be? Because Not this sort of like, this was probably almost the most vague one they had it was just a title card really yeah, and they I didn't mean, give a whole heap about it it's john favreau and dave filoni which intrigues me straight out the which game. is you know it's going to be good because they're the heads of the mandalorian would you say this might be hard to look back of uh, look back on in retrospect but the when you first had mandalorian announced were you kind of like what's that like i know what a mandalorian is but like what what is that going to be? What, what? I, yeah, I had no idea where it was going to go. Because yeah. Because it's like we never had anything shown to us that you could... Aside from Solo and Rogue One, yeah. we had never had any side stories. Yeah. So I guess this is in that same ballpark. Another thing from them where you're yeah. like, okay, what, what, yeah. sounds cool. And What's it like, going to be? Judging from the title, like New Republic, it's probably set sometime around the same time as the Mandalorian. Yeah. Like, or a little bit after, because that's the New Republic. And then like Rangers, are they going to be people like Cara Dune's character in Mandalorian, who is mm-hmm. like a Ranger of the New Republic? Mm-hmm. She's like a a security officer kind of thing or whatever. But are they, is it going to be people like her or is it going to be people like those the X-Wing fi- pilots? Yeah, the X-Wing pilots. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was kind of thinking. Those X-Wing pilots kind of got a buddy cop or vibe thing going. What I would really like mm. is it like an A team? Okay. Is it the A team of the like New Republic? Like they're given all these nice fancy ships because they're you know the new moneyed up Republic. Yeah. But they're like you know the ragtag group of like Rangers that go around doing things. Interesting. I think that could be great. Any character ideas as who could fit that, or do you think it would be a, new a totally yeah, new? I, I yeah. I think it would be new characters. Okay. And I'd want I'd want it to like you know we've we've had enough of. You know, forget that the Skywalkers are over. Yeah. I don't want to see that. As much as like the Sebastian Stan fan cast as young Luke Skywalker is perfect. Great, yeah. If he was to show up, it, I would want it to be like a hologram for five seconds. Yeah. Or just in the background. Like, they're done. We've had nine yeah. movies of them. Yeah. We don't need anything else. Okay. It's but interesting. There's, it's strong there's so many side stories that now that's what they're doing. Like, there's all of these characters who have been introduced, yep. but never had their stories finished. And I think that's what a lot of this stuff is doing. And now also introducing new people for people to get in love with. Yeah. And so, do you think, is this series, I know Ahsoka is, and uh, I thought there was maybe one other series that are maybe going to be crossing over with Mandalorian. Yeah, I think a lot of them, uh, like, I think Rangers the New Republic and I think, uh, oh, maybe maybe just that, is like in the same timeline. Mm. I think a couple of them are in the same, and yeah, uh, and um, Ahsoka, I think, is a bit in the same timeline as yeah. well. All right, yeah, cool. I was excited for that one. That one, yeah. again, was just one that intrigued me. The title, yeah, of, it, yeah. the title of it enough, though, sounded cool. Where I'm like, okay, the idea of Rangers... Yeah, I don't know. Space that, Rangers. Yeah, it's yeah. Space Rangers. Sounds cool. Yeah. So, and like we know that Dave Filoni and John Favreau are guns at doing this. So yeah, as soon as you see they're attached, you're on board. Yeah, um, Ahsoka, obviously huge. Everyone's yeah. been anticipating this for a long time. We had to happen. knew that it was coming. Had to happen. Great that we've seen Rosario Dawson show that she really can play the character. Yeah. and like and get people really excited. Amazing. Yeah. Um, the big thing for me for that was the title card for it. Mm. because the background that like etching pattern yeah is something we've seen before what was it um now i don't know which one of these is right or if they're both the same because i've heard it differently 
it reminded me and a few of my mates of something from the Rebels TV series. Okay. Which is like this space kind of time, like middle ground where yep. she was actually, because she fought Darth Vader yep. in a battle. And then she was only saved because this young guy pulled her out of that like world into this crossover plane, mm-hmm. which had all that design in it. Yep. And they were able to see, you know, different points in time from there until they had to get out of it. And the other thing is that there was that video game that came out last year with the kid from Shameless playing a Jedi, the, the Ranger. No, I don't know. Um, it was the, the, like the real big fighting game, okay. like Star Wars, that was a big hit. Yeah. And that, I think the like the save points or something in that, or like it had some like this repeating is, this symbol. This is deep cuts. I know, this yeah. is deep cuts, yeah. but I think it might have been the same symbol. So it okay. has been seen before. And I think it means that that series might have a bit of time travel or at least like it might be jumping around a bit. Yeah. So we could see a lot in that. And that's exciting. Um, it's also good that she gets her own movie because she really was the star of most of the Movie or Wars. series? It's a series. Series, yeah. Sorry, yeah, series. series. Yeah. yeah, I think... Um, but even just that one episode we got in Mando of yeah. her acted as a really good origin. Like, you don't you don't need a heap more. As somebody that hasn't... I, I'm only familiar with... Um, and Ahsoka, I'm not that fond of in Clone Wars to this yeah, point. I think she's, start, a bit, she's a bit ditzy a and a bit character. like, oh my god, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it acted as the perfect introduction to her. All you really need to know is she's a badass. She yeah. is. I mean, the grey area seems to be: is she a Jedi? It's implied she is a Jedi in Mandalorian, but there seems to be a bit of yeah. She's she's was she was kicked out of the Jedi Order, falsely accused of like treason, and so then trained as a Jedi, but not considered yeah. a Jedi now. Well, she they offered her back when they realized they falsely accused her of it, mm. and then she was like, "Nah, you guys stand for the wrong thing." Yep. Which has always been her thing. It's like, don't follow these people because they, stands alone they all have their problems. They're yep. all corrupt on the inside. And was her... I imagine her story arc, as I progress through Clone Wars, is going to be if... And she sort of alludes to this in Mandalorian. If you can, if they can break the best of us, which she yeah. uh, considered to be Anakin. Yeah. What hope is... like? There's She has a very, very sad story. Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. it's pretty full on. Like her existence has been thrown around a lot. So I wonder if we'll get much of a backstory to that. I guess, that, yeah. Well, at least we don't need to. And I think they've shown that's like, you know, you don't have to have watched all of that. No. Like, no one had to have watched Clone Wars to understand who she was in that. She no. was just a fun, cool new character. And she yeah. had a spot. And now people will know her from that when she gets her own series. Is Dave Filoni on board? To, I don't know. Is he, he's on board he, with that. he must be showrunner. Has yeah. to be. I mean, that's his character. You would imagine. He created that, everything about her. Yeah. You'd imagine he'll be the Favreau of that show, you'd think. Okay, yeah, keen for that. Very Um, keen. The Acolyte. Exciting, because another one we know nothing about. Yeah. And it's the first story of their new era of writing, which is the High Republic. So now this is going back, you know, 500 years or something before, or like 100 years before the the Phantom Menace. Okay. And that's where they're now writing a lot of their new stories, like comic books and books and stuff is all being set back there. Why back there? Oh, it's just unknown. Like you don't have to rely on any of the Skywalker saga for anything there to make sense. Doesn't have to have touched it can be anything. totally yeah. on its own. Isn't that funny? So, will we, do you think we'll really get anything post? Uh, what was it? Episode nine? I don't think so because they've kind of ruined it with everything they did with yeah. the, with the most recent trilogy. Yeah, and there's also no setup for anything bad to exist. But th- you could make the argument that there, there wasn't, wasn't at the after, end of yeah. Return of Jedi. Yeah. Return of the Jedi. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's, okay, so 500 years before Phantom Menace. Oh, it's, yeah, it's at least yeah. at 100 years before. Yeah. And so this is set at the end of that. So this is probably a bit more of a borderline link between the end of that and the start of mm-hmm. like Phantom Menace. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like it's going to be a much darker story. And supposedly when it's coming out is when Disney Plus is starting to introduce more adult content. Okay. So it could be like, if it's like an MA15 series, yeah, I would be all up for that. Because it's set around like the Sith. So you want yeah. something dark and gritty. Okay. And if they start making like a few not family friendly things, yeah, I'm all for that. Do you think that um, with Star Wars... So first of all, is there likely to... Is the religion, I guess, of the Jedi around at this point? Yeah, that's yeah. this is I think when they're kind of at their high point. Okay, so that's the whole point. Yeah, because like, throughout this the Skywalker is, trilogy, they're sort of on the decline. Yeah, and they? there's yeah. still people who don't really believe that they exist and stuff. This is like also much more of a, um, like kind of they are 
like cowboys a bit more and stuff like that. Yeah. Like it's it's getting back to the idea of like the first Star Wars was like samurai cross with cowboys. Yep. They're kind of pulling back and, you know, they've shown pictures of like the designs and they've got more of like hilts. So it's like a bit more like a sword in some sense and yeah. different things like that. Like That's totally what... different design, totally different everything. It's what's annoyed me about Star Wars and it's what I loved about the Ahsoka episode is yeah. I feel like I've never actually seen um, like a badass Jedi. A Jedi represented the way they're portrayed yeah or portrayed the way they represent there's been very few good lightsaber fights as much as everyone like loves the lightsaber the only good ones would be like the end of episode three the anakin and obi-wan massive duel yep yep and then like everyone you know everyone lives for the darth maul fight but that fight was like five minutes when i yeah i watched it just the other week and i was like yeah this is not as long as what i really had imagined or remembered it was Yeah. yeah um and even i guess that's what that's what they've got the ability to do so well now is you look at Boba Fett as well. Boba Fett finally portrayed in a way where you're like, oh, okay, yeah. he actually looks badass now. Whereas yeah. in the in the movies... He was in the movies for like 20 minutes. Yeah, and he, you can't really... But everyone loved him. Yeah, yeah. And he was presented have, as this yeah. assassin killer sort of bounty hunter guy. The version we get now in Mando... Is that. That's what you get. And you're like, oh, you would not want to cross him. Mm-hmm. In the past, I'd never really believed it. Now, had I watched it in the 70s or the 80s, maybe I would have got yeah. more of that. I don't know. Maybe it's, they've just dated. But that's the good thing they can do is they can go back and they can fix a lot of these sorts of things. And going back to that period of the Jedi, that sounds cool. Yeah. I'm on board for that. It could that. be great. Yeah. So there's that. Um, obviously, we've got the two stories we know about. Um Andor, which is from the guy from Rogue One. What do you think of that? I, I think it could be great. Like it's a high, it's a spy film, very yeah. James Bondy. I think a series, sorry, and it's a limited series, which is what they're doing with some of these. I'm on board publicly as saying, you know, this. I did not like Rogue One, which still like it that baffles was one of everyone. my favorite. Yeah, baffles things they've done. I think I'm gonna rewatch it. Yeah, I'm starting to now think. Was I just in a bad mood that night? You could was have I been. was I off? Because it know, is a good story. Everyone loves it. Yeah. Everyone says it's their favorite for the most part. I've had people say that and uh, Solo. Uh, I enjoyed their, Solo as well. <laughs> a lot of people hate favorites. it. It wasn't amazing, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, I've got to go back and watch Rogue One because, yeah. and even when this got announced, I couldn't even really draw the connection with the film like who what yeah. was so i'll go back and rewatch it because it sounds like i need to yeah so that'll be a good very spy film and then lando but they've no there's no announcements whether donald glover has been cast back as lando i heard a great idea um that one of the on kevin smith's fat man beyond podcast their uh audio guy i can't remember his name but he chimed in with his idea which was have um so Lando, you have them both. Yeah, so, I, I've heard that as well. Yeah, and, and you have it told from. Yeah, so it's um, almost like storytelling. Yeah, yeah. So you've got Donald Glover playing young Lando, and who is the actor that plays? I can't remember, uh, but he's old like Lando, original Lando. The story. Yeah, yeah, and it's sort of bookended with him at each yeah. side. That would be cool. Oh, it would be great. Be super yeah. cool. So but there's no confirmation if any of them have been cast, which is kind of interesting. Is it just me or do you not see Donald Glover signing up for that? I mean, it is said to be a limited series. I mean, so, he loves this kind of thing though. Yeah, you'd think. Like, I guess the fact it's a limited series, so it would only be like an eight episode commitment. Yeah, well, they're saying these ones are like between eight and 12 episodes. Yeah. yeah. So I guess, you know, he could sign, sign him up for that. Yeah, and I feel like he's... But he'd enjoy it. Like, that's his kind of thing. He does all of these little things. You'd think, but it's just the, it's the commitment of time. Yeah. And he seems like a guy that... Is super busy. Yeah, he definitely is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no. If that's if that was the model for that show, again, got to be careful here not to trick ourselves into thinking that is the model. But yeah, that that it would, would be amazing. Me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Hayden huge. Christensen back as huge. Darth yeah. Vader. That yeah. was a big announcement. I wasn't expecting that. Yep. Um, what do you think? Uh, could be amazing. They said that we're going to get the lightsaber fight that we always wanted between them. Yeah. Which is kind of going to be hard to pull off because there's a fan edit of that lightsaber duel in episode four mm-hmm. that someone has done. That and it's great. <laughs> one of the best things you'll ever see. <laughs> Bloody fans. We ruined it for ourselves. Oh, but I know. I'm telling it's, you. it's incredible. And so if it's along the lines of that, it'll be very heavy. Yeah. It'll be very emotional. It's good that nothing was actually set up in episode four that would disregard this as being possible yeah nothing that they say indicates that they haven't seen each other since revenge of the sith yeah so they have the freedom to move around 
I guess the, the only thing I was thinking was if his back is Darth Vader, is he going to be under the mask the whole time? If so, what's the voice going to? Is it not James yeah. Earl Jones? Like, I don't know what they're going to do with that. They could do what they did in the Rebels, where like they cut off, like because Ahsoka cuts off past part of his mask mm. and sees that it's Anakin inside, and that's when it like hit her that like wow, that's who this it is. is him. Yeah. But I assume that you know Obi Wan would know that Darth Vader is Anakin from yeah. the start. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, it's just the voice that intrigues me. If he's yeah. in the full suit, I just I'm like, well, yeah, I, I you got to have James Earl Jones. You have to. Yeah. Um, unless they try and retcon it as this way of when he's got the helmet on, he sounds like James Earl Jones, and when he's got the helmet off, which he... could be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> because in that in that scene in, um, I think it is Return of the Jedi, where we see Darth Vader without the helmet. It's not James L. Jones. It's not James... No, it was Talking? Old. Like, do they dub James L. Jones's voice over the... Well, I don't know. I think the they've actors. changed it up a few times because I think they've tried to, like, edit the face. Actually, and... they go back and edit the audio too, don't yeah, they? I think I they've think so. maybe changed it over time. Yeah, look, keen. Mm. Keen for it. It sounds like, if anything, some good lightsaber fights could and again, be <laughs> happening. And like, I'm happy that these are limited series. Mm. You know, give us a 10-part story yep. and end it at that. Yeah. Leave the like, leave the series, like mm. the multi-series series, to characters that we don't know much about, yeah, or characters that we don't know anything about. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of these series in particular, Obi One. Yeah, it's a it's a backfiller almost, yeah. like it's to it's filling in the gap. Ever wondered what happened between yeah, exactly. that? Yeah, yeah, let's fill it in. Yeah, cool. I'm super on board for it. I think it'll be very cool. I also kind of like the idea of Hayden Christensen getting to come back and maybe, oh yeah, maybe give like you know go out and a, a nicer note for himself. Yeah, <laughs> I mean like everyone really I think respects his character now. Yeah, there's been a weird thing where it's like everyone hated what he did with it, but it wasn't him. It was the writing. It happens all the time. Yeah. Like looking back on hindsight at things, people look back fondly. Um, yeah, and that's the other thing. It wasn't necessarily his fault. No, no, no. But like everyone has loved the fact that he's been cast back. Yeah, there is like no excitement. bad things about it, considering how much everyone hated his character in yeah. the the prequels. I think it's also great that obviously they're both both the actors from the prequels. Yeah. Are, they, they haven't had to recast, so yeah. I think that's another Perfect. major selling point. Was there anything else? Uh, the movies. So I think that's all for the series. Yeah. Um, and then we've got. Rogue Squadron, um, Patty Jenkins, who did Wonder Woman. Yeah. And uh, like, it looks like it's going to be a very Top Gun-esque Star Wars movie. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. again, I'm all for. That could be great. Sounds cool. Don't know really when it's set. I can't... I think it's during the Mandalorian time-ish. Or yeah. maybe it could be earlier. Because like Rogue Squadron is like, you know, because it related to Rogue One. Mm. Or is it related to... There's a video game called Rogue Squadron, which I have, don't know any of the story of. I haven't played it. Yeah, no, I know nothing about it. So, I, it, it could all be I knew related was, to something or not. And apparently Patty Jenkins put up something on her social media. There was she, some she video. Did a, like, yeah, a yeah, teaser kind a of thing. A little short thing. Um, yeah, so go check that out. That, yeah, sounds interesting. I mean, Patty Jenkins, cool. I'm on board. Wonder Woman, you sold me with that. Could yeah, have, could I, I still... I think I don't know that I've seen Wonder Woman through properly, so <laughs> I, I can't say whether that... Green is a director. A good director. Good director, yep. Um, And then the last thing, which obviously I'm most excited for, is a Taika Waititi Star Wars film. What's he doing? No one knows. The only thing that we've seen is the design of the Star Wars logo for his film, which is very, like, different. Yeah. It's a very old school, like, bang Mm. logo. And it could be crazy. I, it's gonna be yeah. that's one of your sure things I think and that's what Disney will be banking on you, you bring somebody like that in knowing okay we know what we're gonna get here this is gonna be have all the money yeah, have all the yeah. Money. Do is what you your want. understanding that this will be set in that time in that same time frame you're talking about where all the new stories are being written I, I'd hope so Get let him do I mean, something let sense, him do something but... original yeah yeah. I, I really want like, because knowing how well he can tell stories yeah. with like a dark, I guess like you could fit it in a gap somewhere, but I'd want him to have his own area. Yeah. No like connections to anything else that he has to pull from mm. and just do his own thing and he would nail it. Like even especially like what he wrote on social media and he's like, can't wait to ruin Star Wars for everyone. Yeah. Like, you know, he's going to have fun with it. It kind of feels like this is their opportunity to have uh, their Guardians of the Galaxy for Star Wars. You know, remember when Guardians came out, it was very different from everything else Marvel and also a lot more comedy. That, like, it was presented as almost a comedy. Yeah. Um, But it wasn't that cheesy, annoying comedy of the the other movies. It still fit. Yeah. 
and that's what James Gunn obviously bought there. It kind of feels like he could be the guy to bring a bit of that element to Star Wars, which is by and large a very serious yep. franchise. Um, something with a little bit more levity. So yeah, keen to see that. Um, yeah. Anything he does, I'm intrigued for. So um, yeah, shit. There's a lot to come out. Was that yeah. pretty? That pretty much wrapped up the Star Wars. I think so. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of hard to tell at this point because, nah, like, I oh, know you know, and we didn't even get into any of the Pixar or no. the, the Disney original nah. films and stuff like that. So it is. It be, it was too there's much. too much to go through. The main things were always going to be Marvel, Star Wars, um, and then obviously a couple a of the few, main yeah. uh, Disney features to come out. But for the most part. It, you know, that, that Star Wars news, that's enough for a year worth of news. And yeah. in what has been a very slow year, year for pop yeah, what culture a good news, way to close it out. Yeah, it's a shame this wasn't episode 50 because I liked the nice rounded 50. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, you're 100% right. In, in a year that was crap for news and a lot of, the, you know, the episodes we've even done, you know, we did a Tiger King episode at one point. That's, that's oh, that said a that, bit that about... That feels like it was like five <laughs> years ago. <laughs> so long ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, at least we've got some stuff to look forward to moving yeah. out of this shit year. And if they space it out long enough, you've got content to take you through the next three years without question. And you know what the best thing is? Star Wars is really set up well to be able to film in a COVID world as well. That's what I love. Yeah. Like Mando filmed throughout the whole thing. Yeah. They were fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with the new like tech they're built for it. Like, yep. Yeah, you can do environments, anything. Environments, yeah. Um, any final thoughts that you want to share? Let's let's do a quick Mando. Okay. Um. So obviously, last episode, both really liked that. It was yeah. a bit of a sort of had a heisty feel to it, I yeah. guess. Um, I thought it was really good. It was also very emotional, like very from... emotional. Bill Burr, who knew he could act that well? I know. I was like, <laughs> Bill Burr last season was playing Bill Burr. Yeah, like, that's he's playing himself. Amazing. And this, all of a sudden, it's like, hang on, you've got depth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Where did he this had come severe from? depth in that the uh, PTSD style. That was heavy. Yeah, it was great. Like you just see him at the table when the like the guy's telling his story to him, and he's you just see the anger and depression building up inside of him. And yeah. it's like, and you he's going to shoot him. He's going to shoot him. The tenseness in that scene was fantastic. Oh, You've got yeah. Mando with that, his helmet on. That was an element of tense oh. and, and things that shouldn't be happening. Pedro Pascal, man, that man can act with his face. <laughs> he's like, great. Doesn't need to say anything. When he took that helmet off, you see him and you go, there he is. Yeah. There he is. So like, you much feel emotion. like, you know, we've only seen him yeah. once in that. Yeah. He doesn't even just say anything when he has his helmet off. It's just the emotion in his face. Yeah. What do you, what's your prediction? We've still got uh, one episode. Ba- yeah, Baby Yoda or Gro- Grogu. Grogu, yeah, yeah. Uh, has been taken. What's your prediction for the final episode? Do you have one? Uh, Boba Fett's going to die. They're going to cut him out into his final farewell, and it'll be good. He'll go down in a blaze of glory. It's going to be a bit of an Avengers team up, I think, with the other Mandalorians that showed up earlier in the series, uh, and I don't think Ahsoka is going to come back, but I think they're going to introduce Thrawn as at least a hologram, the guy that she brought up in her episode, which will be the big bad of season three. Love it. Hopefully cast someone good. <laughs> I think like Michael Fassbender is my cast for him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like that too. Yeah, that'd be a good way. Well, mate, perfect way to finish, I think. <laughs> All the best for the final season or final episode of uh, Mandalorian. Yeah. All right, good Hope luck the emotions that. don't ride too high. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> mate. Thanks for joining me. Oh, it's good to be back. <laughs>